Hello, and welcome to the Steve Barkley Ponders Out Loud podcast. Instructional coaches and leaders create the environment that supports teachers to continually imagine, grow, and achieve. They model an excitement for learning that teachers in turn model for students. This podcast is dedicated to promoting the important aspects of instructional leadership. Thanks for listening. I'm thrilled you're here. Healthy Relationships Between the Instructional Coach and the Principal. I'm recording the podcast today at the Instructional Coaches Conference from Region 13 in Austin, Texas. I had the opportunity to attend a session by Lindsay Deacon, the uh, co-author of the book, The EduCoach Survival Guide. Her session was titled, Partnering with the Principal, Healthy Relationships Between the Coach and the Principal. And uh, as soon as I got halfway through her session, I walked up and uh, invited her to uh, join me for a podcast. So welcome, Lindsay. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, Lindsay, I wondered if you start by giving folks a, a little bit of introduction to your background. Yeah, I think the most important thing to know is that when I was like 29 years old, something like that, Way back, I got sent to Jim Knight's first instructional coaching institute Great. in Kansas, having no idea who he was. And that just sent me on a path to really having a passion for coaching all this time later. And then later, I had the opportunity to work on Jim Knight's team through Corwin, which also then put me on a path to work for John Hattie's team um, with Visible Learning. And then, yeah, I just recently published a book a couple years ago, The Edge Coach Survival Guide, mostly about... All the all the terrible stuff that happens in coaching that we then have to work <laughs> survive. Through. Yeah, 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 basically, yes. Well, that, it's such a neat connection because uh, Jim Knight, Joel, and Killian, and I, yeah. the three of us, were in one of the first early videos about uh -huh. instructional coaching. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was, none of the people watching the video knew that the three of us had never met. Oh, they, they I had didn't filmed, know that. <laughs> They had filmed the three sessions individually. Uh -huh. So then since they brought those uh, together, mm -hmm. we, we've done a lot of work together over the years. Yeah. And I'll be, uh, I'll be heading to Jim's uh, conference uh, coming up this year. And yeah. He's been on the podcast uh, uh, here with me. We frequently. So talk a little bit about how you describe the importance of the, uh, the coach principal relationship. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that always comes to mind for me is that I've worked alongside a lot of principals and um, nobody really trained me in the beginning what to do. We just kind of got thrown together and uh, inevitably there were so many things that went wrong because we were just thrown together and we didn't set up any um, true structures. So when I think about like a healthy coach principal relationship, it's about having um, like partnership agreements together where you really sit down and you talk about, um, you know, how often are we going to meet? What are we going to talk about in those meetings? What kind of communication do we have? Um, you know, when is it okay to cancel a meeting? When is it not okay to cancel a meeting? How, you know, what confidentiality do we share or not share? Um, all of those kinds of things. And then also just thinking about, um, like, what are their shared beliefs and visions about coaching? Because sometimes it can be so different. And um, even if two people come with different beliefs, they should find a way to craft some sort of shared agreements. In the uh, last session that I was sitting uh, sitting in on at, with a table of coaches, and Diane Sweeney was talking about the, the coach-principal uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I like to describe it at, at its easiest level. Uh, the easiest level is the job of the coach is to make the principal look good and the job of the principal totally. is to make the coach look good. Absolutely. And if we both will approach it that yes. way, then uh, you know that that I want teachers to see you in the best mm -hmm. light, and and you want teachers to see me in the best light. That we can we can build our partnership from there. Yeah, and I you know I have to have full disclaimer. I've never been a principal. I've worked alongside a lot of principals, and I've been a coach, but I can't say that I know what it feels like to sit in that seat. But I can say that I know from a lot of experience supporting other coaches as well as myself, that if there's no support from the principal, it's like the effectiveness of the coaching program is just going to be really limited. I, I haven't been a principal either. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I've done a lot of principal training. Yeah. But I always focus my, my principal piece on it in that, in effect, 
uh, when a district hires an instructional coach, they've actually made an investment in the principal's building. Yeah. So in effect, the, uh, I, I, I compare it to if you, uh, if, if you, if you bought a, an expensive copier mm -hmm. and put it in your building, the mm -hmm. district would be holding the principal accountable to yeah. see that the money was spent effectively. Yeah. So if I bring that down, I su suggest it's, it's yeah. the same with an inst instructional coach. They're, yeah. they're a resource for the principal yes. to achieve the goals yeah. of the building. That's and that's why it it's so important for the principal to make sure the coach is actually doing the coaching. Because if then if they're not doing it, they're not really um, like meeting that initial investment that was yep. made. Yeah. So in your session, you talked about the uh, coach principal agreements. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you'd uh, just give us a couple of the things that people should be considering on putting one of those agreements together. Yeah, I think in the beginning, uh, it really comes down to just a lot of logistical agreements because I know that uh, people communicate differently. Like, right, when is it okay to text each other? or email each other, or, you know, those kinds of like communication agreements, as well as when we sit down and we have meetings, like who's making the agenda and how often do we do this? And I think meeting frequency is important because we all know if you, you know, emergencies happen. If one meeting gets canceled last minute, that's, you know, that happens. But if it happens over and over and over again, pretty soon, then you're like, well, why are we meeting? What are we even doing? You're spending a lot of time catching up. So I think those agreements are important as well as just establishing what details about the teachers are being shared or um, about, you know, like, are they learning together? I think the principal and the coach should be learning together as well. And that might be when they schedule time to do instructional rounds or observations, those kinds of things. So, so fair to use the word expectations? Yeah, but I think they should be formalized. Yeah, I don't think formalized that, expectations. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, it's very helpful at the beginning of the year. I mean, everybody sits down and they all have a smile at the beginning. They're like, this is how it's <laughs> going to be. And then in November, they're not smiling anymore. And so I think if you have those expectations, yeah. like, you Spelled know, out. written down, then you can revisit them and say what's working or what's not working. I, I had to laugh because uh, when I was sitting in your session, you, you commented on the job description and yeah. how lots of places don't like to have a job description. Yeah. I, uh, I I wrote a, a blog and did a, did a podcast on that because I, uh, I, I found one where it was like a list of 27 things yeah. that the coach was accountable for. And the last one was anything else the principal yes requests. it's like uh i feel like i've seen that ever like duties as a sign yeah. <laughs> so pretty hard for a coach to be yeah. keeping track of it's uh, impossible that you've, uh, yeah, yeah. That you're effectively using your time yeah so in my head uh relationships with teachers mm -hmm. are are critical for the coach to have and they're critical for the principal to have yeah and i'm wondering if you talk a little bit how do you see a uh, principal supporting the coach relationship with teachers? Mm -hmm. And how do you see the coach mm -hmm. supporting the principal's relationship with teachers? Yeah, I think at the beginning of the year, what is really helpful for a principal to do is make sure that they're advocating for coaching and not assigning, like, you have to fix this teacher or you have to work with the coach. But, you know, at the very beginning of the year, really publicizing just what is coaching and um, how can teachers access the coach? What's the purpose of it? As well as I think um, modeling, reflecting on their own practice and maybe some of the shared decisions that are made with the coach. I also think it's really important for a principal, again, to have role clarity in terms of what is the coach supposed to be doing? Because a lot of coaches come into the role not really knowing. I mean, even I had formal training from Jim Knight before I became a coach, but when I actually got into the building, I thought, what am I supposed to be doing all day? Like, I know what a coaching cycle is, but what do I do? And that was really hard. Um, I was really lucky to have a great principal who pretty much spelled it out for me. But most people are not that lucky. So I think a principal just making sure that they're clear on what coaching is. Then on the flip side, I think like what you said earlier, a coach makes a principal look good too, right? Um, I think a coach can really support a principal by just really listening when they meet and hearing what's pressing on the principal's mind, as well as, um, you know, really figuring out, like, if this, these are the school's instructional mission or vision, how do you then translate that into working with teachers? So the, in effect, they work for each other. Yeah, and, they should. And, and 
and they have the common goal mm -hmm. of whatever the advancement of student learning yeah. for the for the school is. Yeah, and I think a lot of principals that I've met do not really have access to a lot of coaching or mentoring. I mean, there might be a little bit, but from my experience, I haven't met a lot right. of principals who have a lot of coaching. So the coach then sort of inevitably falls into also kind of coaching the principal, which can be awkward, but I also think it's a really great opportunity for coaches to to show principals what they do. Uh, agreed. Yeah. And, and I think we can flip it too. Yeah. The, so the coach yes. inviting the principal for coach for, totally. to coach. Uh, I'm going to model a lesson in this teacher's classroom. Yeah. I'd love if you could stop by mm -hmm. and do a coaching session with yes. me. And then yeah. if we can get them to go to the next step, mm -hmm. which is invite the teacher whose classroom you modeled in yeah. to sit in on yeah. the coach being coached by the principal. Yeah. Uh, we, I think we really got opportunities to set that culture. Yeah, I mean, it should be a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it should be. Yeah. In best yeah. practices. Yeah. I, I, one, one that I push for school leadership teams is a great start of the year is for the members of the school leadership team to pass their professional growth plans mm -hmm. for the year mm -hmm. out to the teachers. Yeah. So if the year started by the coach saying, yeah. here's how I'm looking to grow, the principal says, here's how I'm looking to grow, mm -hmm. we're open to the staff giving mm -hmm. us feedback on that. Yeah. Now we're going to model mm -hmm. that same coachability yeah. that we're asking the teachers to step into. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm wondering what advice you'd have for uh, for new coaches. I have to tell you, I sat next to one in your session yeah. today, and she was writing down oh, no. everything you said. <laughs> I worry that when you're a new coach right now, it's like a information with a fire hose, right? <laughs> Just some of the most important you think for a new coach. And I, yeah. I got to tell you, this gal in your session, yeah. she hasn't met the principal yet. Oh, no. Yeah. So she's, she's a first-year yeah. coach yeah. going into a situation yeah. where she hasn't met the principal. I think... Uh, and I, maybe this is just my personality or my disposition, but when you go in, just listen, right? Yeah. Just listen, observe, you know, even if you know the school, uh, like I was a teacher who then became a coach in my school and had a lot of like, whoa, you know, like the lid is lifted. A lot of things that I wasn't expecting to see or know about. So just really going in and sort of thinking like a scientist, just what am I seeing, collecting information, and even in formal meet and greets with teachers is still collecting information, right? Yeah. But but I really think um, to just be visible in the hallways and see what's happening is a really good way for coaches just to get a sense of what the culture of learning in the school is. I love that statement. Think like a scientist. Yeah. That's that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, how about any advice for, uh, for new principals uh, coming into position? But most principals had nothing in their... Uh, yeah. in their leadership training about how to how to work with the coach in your school. Yeah, like I said, I've never sat in the principal seat, but what I could say is that if you are really invested in um, the professional learning of your staff, you have to give your coach time to coach. So you're going to be really tempted to assign them a lot of lunch duty or have them sub in classrooms or plan that meeting last minute because you didn't get to it. And that is not a good use of the coach's time, especially if there's only one coach in the building. You know, I always think about it um, like if you owned a bakery and you had this really amazing pastry chef, uh, but the pastry <laughs> chef was like always in the back washing the dishes, trying to like catch up and they were the cashier. Like that's a great, how good that's would a, your pastries that's a great be, picture, yeah. right? You know, so... If you only have one person specifically selected to do this one role, why would you reroute them and have them do something else? And I know that it's really hard right now. There's a shortage of everything. I have definitely experienced it. But you've got to just provide time for the coach to coach. If, if, if a principal is uh, and coach are both brave enough, I, I did find a coach-principal uh, 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 pair that... Uh, once every two weeks when they met, uh -huh. the uh, coach shared her schedule yeah, for the past absolutely. two weeks. But she color-coded the schedule. Yeah, yeah. So she marked green uh -huh. the things that she did that she thought were going to have the greatest impact on student learning. Yeah. She marked yellow things like that she level. wasn't she wasn't sure. You know, mm -hmm. I was at this PLC meeting, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much I impacted student achievement there. <laughs> and then red yeah. was... I'm pretty sure that yeah. the kids aren't learning more yeah. today yeah. because I did this. Now, we all know there's got to be some red, mm -hmm. 
but the but yeah. but the question is how how much of it is is showing up there? Yeah, you know, I've done something really similar where I felt honestly I had a client, um, a coaching client, where I was spending an abnormal amount of time with them and I was not seeing any movement. And I color coded my schedule, brought it to my supervisor, and just said, "What do you want me to do with this?" You know, I'm not making a judgment, but what do you want me to do? And he said, "Use your time in another." Like he gave me permission, yeah. yeah, to then go and use my time more wisely. I think it's great. Well, uh, Lindsay, I, I really appreciate the, the the time you've given us here. Yeah. Want to tell folks a little bit about uh, some of the things that are in your in your book? Yeah. Um, so when we first published our survival guide in 2020, we didn't realize how like necessary a survival guide in 2020 would be. But essentially, it is a field guide that's not meant to be read cover to cover. It's got 47 scenarios that are organized: the coach, the teachers, the principal, and teams. And so if you are just like stuck and you're like, man, I have a teacher and they just keep canceling on me. I don't know what to do. Then you can just open up to those pages. Yep. And there's like a plan A, plan B, plan C. And then we have, um, because I know everybody's got this robust coaching library on, you know, on their shelf. It's like, if this is your issue, you can look at our plan for just a quick in the moment strategy, but then go to like a Jim Knight book or an Elena Aguilar book, right? And here are the pages and here's the chapter that would give you more insight into those issues. You know, and we really believe too that the coach needs to be clear on them on their own practice first. So I'd say like probably the first 17 or 18 scenarios are really all about like the coach. The coach wants to build relationships. Coach feels isolated. You know, coach wants to collect data on their coaching, those kinds of things. As well as then like, okay, now you've got a teacher who's really overwhelmed. What do you do? Or you've got a principal kind of fishing for confidential details. What do you do? So, um, yeah, we just really want it to be an easy guide to open. Terrific. Yeah. You want to tell folks the uh, way to find your book and uh, ways they can communicate uh, communicate with you if they have questions? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can just look up the Edge Coach Survival Guide on Amazon. Um, or our website is the edgecoachsurvivalguide.com. But I'm on Twitter, the real Lindsay Deacon two, as in number two. <laughs> Terrific. Um, yeah. So, but I, if anybody reaches out, I always respond. I love to hear from coaches. Terrific. Well, we'll be sure to stick that in the uh, in the lead into this uh, this podcast. So, thanks again, and thank enjoy so the rest of your conference. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to Steve Barkley Ponders Out Loud on iTunes and Podbean. And please remember to rate and review us on iTunes. I also want to hear what you're pondering. You can find me on Twitter at Steve Barkley or send me your questions and find my videos and blogs at barkleypd.com.